hello so today's video is going to be a little bit of a tour and kind of chat about small workspace areas I work in a very small space it's basically just a little section of my bedroom that I have carved out to be my studio area if you will um, and I wanted to give a few tips and tricks for utilizing a small space if that's all you have and also just sharing with you my workspace because I love seeing other artists workspace so yeah I'm gonna do a bit of an overview of the area first and kind of go over the tips that I have for making a small workspace efficient and then I'm also gonna do like a deep dive rundown nitty-gritty look at my shelves and things and supplies and stuff because I really like that. I did a little Twitter poll and it seems that other people like that too. So if you just want a quick overview and stuff like that, watch the first part and stick through the whole thing if you want all those dirty details. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the video. Bye. So this is my main workspace. You can see it's just tucked into the far corner of my room by the windows. That's my bed and the piano there. Um, it's very small but it, the space is used efficiently, which I think is extremely important when you have a small workspace. And I wanted to walk you through the area and show you the things I do to make my small space comfortable and workable for me. I think my biggest tip for a small workspace is honestly considering your own aesthetic. It may seem frivolous, but think if you had your dream studio situation, what would it look like? What would the decor look like? And do everything you can to match that as best you can with what you have. For me, that means beautiful art on the walls as well as showcasing some of the collections I have of things that bring me joy and inspire me. Everyone's aesthetic is different, of course, but the idea is to create a space where you feel comfortable and inspired to work in, even if it's just a tiny section of your home. My next tip might seem pretty obvious, but it's really important to remember, and that is to consider size restrictions depending on the space you have. For example, this is my drawing tablet. It's a Huion Canvas Pro 13, and it is not the largest size that this particular tablet comes in. However, it is the maximum size that fits on my desk comfortably and also that I'm able to store easily. And that's extremely important. Having an incredibly large cumbersome item always out and always in my way is gonna hinder my workflow, not help it. So whether you work digitally or traditionally, just make sure you're considering the actual space you have and what's going to be practical. My final tip is making sure you have the best storage possible for your area. Storage is so important in a small workspace. I looked for shelving units online and there was nothing that fit this space in any practical or well-used manner. So I built my own. I built this shelving unit and this shelving unit and that makes it sound extremely complex like this was some big process. It was not. These are the easiest shelves to assemble ever because it was really more of assembling than building anything per se. I had boards cut and measured to the size that I wanted. I stained them and then I purchased these steel pipes and flanges which screw together, measured, and attached them all. That's it. There was no big construction. There was no massive undertaking. I wanted shelves that were thicker like this because I like them, again, for aesthetic purposes. But you could do this with any size boards. I also like that these are incredibly sturdy so I can fill them up with stuff and not have to worry about them falling apart. But I really, really recommend looking into building your own storage systems if you have a small space. You will be able to utilize every inch of that space that way and you'll get something that really, really fits your area better than anything else will. It doesn't have to be complex, I promise. Give it a try. All right, it's time for the deep dive into my shelves. <laughs> this top shelf here is mainly for aesthetic purposes versus anything practical. I use it to showcase some of my collections, uh, like these cobalt blue bottles. I collect cobalt blue glass all around my house. I think it's beautiful. This little bottle here houses loose cat whiskers that I find around our home. That up there is a fossilized shark tooth among some other little treasures. I collect antique books as well, although not so much recently, but I have many that I love that have been gifted or thrifted. This is a solid polished obsidian egg that was my grandfather's before he passed, and it is utterly stunning. It's one of my favorite things. You can see how beautiful the shine is here, but you should see it in the sunlight. It is breathtaking. 
Other than that, I have some smooth rocks, which are another thing I collect. Over here, I have some chopsticks uh, just for nighttime and also my emergency chocolate stash, which is something everyone should have. The next shelf is for books. This is my TBR pile of all the books I still have yet to read, along with all of the art books that I have in my collection. Those top two of the sideways ones there, the Final Fantasy and Blue Zelda book, I haven't read them, which is why they're a bit out of order. And the rest are just the other books in my collection. If you ever want to deep dive on these, let me know. I'd love to go through them with you and just share my collection because I love art books. Next is the book I'm currently reading and a very hideous box of tissues. Why are tissues always so ugly? I really don't get it. And they sit on top of my scanner and printer. My Copics and Copic ink are stored here. They're easy to access because I take them out and use them all the time. I have some spare palettes, paper towels, and underneath are my chameleon pens, which I don't use that often, so they're not super accessible. The bottom shelf has my light box here on the left, as well as my desk easel for oil painting, and underneath are my spare wooden panel canvases and things like that for painting. These two boxes, as they say, house my original art and prints for sale. And in the corner are some collaging and mixed media supplies I can't bring myself to get rid of, even though I don't ever use them. <laughs> this is my crystal collection in this new shadow box I just recently got from my mother. It also has some rocks too, because I love rocks and crystals. I prefer crystals in their raw form, which is what a lot of these are, and I can't wait to fill it all the way up. Down here are my oil painting supplies. Uh, this box was actually from a tea mug that I was gifted. It's so beautiful, I had to repurpose it so it holds my oil paints. And then this is my current palette, trick I learned in college. Put your paint in the bottom of something that seals, fill it with water, and then it can't dry out. I use this all the time for my oil paints. It's super easy and practical. And my acrylic inks sit here as well. The next shelf is easily accessible supplies that I use. There's foam brushes, I use those for coating my canvases in white gesso, a few spare other brushes, sketching pencils, of course, uh, some ballpoint pens in a variety of colors, my fine liners that I haven't used yet, and then some metallic pens in many repurposed jars, which I can't stop collecting. <laughs> Behind those are a heat gun, which I rarely ever use. It's for embossing or for resin, and then some just acrylic craft paint. My safflower oil is actually the thinner that I use for my oil paints, so I rinse those out uh, and then clean the brushes with like an ivory bar of soap. Another trick I learned in college, it's cheap and affordable. I pour my used oil into a jar because you should never pour that down your sink. That's, that's bad news for your plumbing. When it's full, I dispose of it properly. Back here are a few spare random supplies, a koi watercolor set, a fishing line, I truly don't know why that's there, Who? I don't know, and some graphite pencils. Some spare palettes, these are what I use uh, with my acrylic ink, I have a porcelain palette and then just some of the cheap plastic ones. That box is pretty self-explanatory, it's pressed flowers and leaves. This little jar is actually pieces of ceramics and porcelain that I've dug up from riverbeds. That's a weird hobby I don't usually talk about, but I love doing it. I love saving little treasures that I find out in the woods and in the ground that I can dig up. I'm saving those for resin projects. We have the rest of my empty jar collection, which I continually add to despite having no current uses for them, but I can't stop saving. And then my papers. I have some empty sketchbooks, uh, my mixed media paper, Strathmore Mixed Media 400 series is what I use most often, my Express It blending card, and I think there's even a render sketchbook tucked back here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there it is. I'm excited to use that. Great for Copic markers. Then just a few sketchbooks I need to finish out and some blank notebooks for whatever I need. These boxes are mostly empty, but they're great for storage. The top houses my stickers I can't figure out what to do with. A friend made me that rad pencil case and I love it. I have some spare mini tripods, a box of washi tape. This box here holds all my Sharpies. And then this bin is an extremely random amount of supplies. It has no theme, but it's stuff I use quite frequently, fine liners, my white gesso, but it also holds things I rarely use like Posca pens and resin. It's a big mix, but it's accessible, so no problem. Those are molds for resin work, little box of thumbtacks, and my colored pencils, which um, easiest storage system ever. It's a shoebox that I glued toilet paper tubes into. Highly recommend if you like organizing things by color as I do. Cheap, easy, simple. This box hold, uh, holds old art 
either sketches or unfinished work, things I couldn't figure out what to do with but couldn't bring to throw away. And this is my shipping supplies. I'm almost out of the plastic envelopes since I want to move to eco-friendly packaging. I save old shipping envelopes that I can repurpose, so if you order from me, you may get those because it's much more environmentally friendly. And cardboard I've saved for cutting down for packages and things. And those are everything I can fit on my shelves. Um, I do have a couple things I keep on my desk that I will show you in just a moment, but that's the bulk of my supplies. They fit great. Uh, I've actually rearranged them pretty frequently, but I really like this setup and I'm gonna stick with this one for a while. My working desk area is pretty small, but it fits the space. So again, you gotta use what you have. It's about a little over two by three feet. It is just from Ikea. Um, it's an individual desktop where the legs come separately and then you have to attach them. I have it placed in front of my window so I get a beautiful amount of natural light while I work. And I also love looking out and watching the bird feeders and the squirrels that come to the yard. It kind of just adds to the uh, aesthetic of my workspace and it's, it's just really nice to work with the sunshine too. The most important part of this setup is my wall mounted monitors. We actually upgraded to these last year. I can show you the mount. So it attaches here and then you have the arms that come up and you can adjust the height and angle of the monitors extremely easily. They just freely move. This has been such an amazing space saver because it keeps my very small desk open for working without double monitors taking up huge amounts of space. It's a little pricey. I think this setup was about $100 from Amazon, but it is so, so worth it. If you have a way you can wall mount your monitors, I highly, highly recommend it. The other things that are on my desk permanently are my streaming gear. This is my face cam. Uh, my art cam here that I can swing up to be pointed at my desk and my mic for recording all my audio. I keep this little bin of frequently used supplies here, pencils, erasers, sharpeners, fine liners, things like that. And then I have my Twitch log and my planner that stay on my desk. My Twitch log I use for recording fun things that happen on Twitch and it is lovingly known as the Book of Names. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed a look at my little workspace area. It is small, but it is mine and it's what I have. And I think it's really important to work with what you've got and be as happy with that as you can. So take care everyone, be well. I'll see you next time.